to the channel, nice to see you again, and welcome back to the fish room. We've got a bunch of tanks in here, as regular subscribers will know, but I've got a couple of video projects on the go which are taking a bit longer to get through, so I thought I'd throw this one in as a bit of a Q&A to answer some questions that I often get asked about past videos, projects, things that are going on. So rather than making dedicated videos about each of them, we'll do one video with all of them. And if you have any questions that I don't cover in this video, stick them in the comments and I'll do them as short replies or something like that. Let's get started. Not necessarily a question anyone has asked about, but this was the last tank that I set up and a few people just wanted to see how it ended up because I mentioned in the last video that I added a few more plants and a few extra fish. And I'm still pretty happy with it. One thing I have noticed is if you can get in there, we've got a little bit of diatoms building up. A little bit of algae on that bit of wood. I'm not sure if that was from the tank that I stole it from or not. But I think we just need to dial back the lighting a little bit. But as a tank, I'm well happy with it. All the fish in it are doing fantastic. But one day, once these guys are a bit bigger, I think I've got what is a pair. The reason I think that is because I started with five of them and these two killed the other ones. And they've lived in a tank together for, I want to say like six, eight months or so. And they, they've claimed the underneath that filter is home. But yeah, breeding behaviour from rams is notoriously sketchy. Um, but they've been alright so far and haven't been breeding. The rest of the fish are all doing great. I've had one plant which has not done great. This one here has died off, but all the other ones looking good. Right, to the first thing that I've actually been asked about. And this is it. This is my very lucky, how I figured this one out, um, blackworm breeding culture. Now, I've linked the video, so the video will be linked up here somewhere or something like that, uh, what we were originally talking about. So I've only had this going for about three months but it is by far my most successful black worm culture that I've ever had. I don't know if you can see in there. That is a bazillion black worms. Normally I've done it in buckets before. I've never done it in this kind of arrangement. Um, so I'll give you a quick overview of what we've got going on. On this side, I've got a water line coming in. I started it on a continuous drip, so as it would continually drip into this and then overflow where that sponge is. We go to this here and drip into my waste so it would get flushed away. It wasn't bad, but what I ended up doing is just running it for maybe 10 minutes a day. I'll just run it like that rather than having the continuous drip. I only did it like that because it was starting to annoy me with <laughs> the noise of the constant dripping. So I just do that every now and again and that's fine. I could set that up in a timer, that's not a big deal. But in terms of maintenance, how I do this is I have this, is how I feed, in fact there's even some black worms in there. I go in once a day and just kind of rummage around, moving the stones around because black worms they reproduce by you basically cutting them in half and then you get twice as many and then those ones grow. So I do that and then I take out a sample from, I don't know, like there and then I'll have a bunch of black worms in there that I can then feed as I want to in the tanks. There's is that the first time I've actually never got any? Oh no, there's a few in there. But in terms of feeding it, I've changed what I would normally do. Normally I would use algae pellets, spirulina powder, things like that. What I've taken to doing is throwing in bits of, whether it's, I've got a load of frozen food that I use for feeding Mega Tank. Let's show you Mega Tank. So here's Mega Tank. And quite often as a treat, I will defrost a bunch of frozen food, so there might be squid, um, octopus, lobster, prawn, whatever it is. And when I'm feeding these guys a treat, which I will do later, so stay, in the, stay till the end of the video to see that. But when I'm feeding these guys a treat, I will throw in a bit in here. So if I have a dead fish or something, it'll go in there. That doesn't happen very often, thankfully. Let me turn this light off. But in there, you might be able to see There's a bit of, I think it's a bit of octopus or something like that. Just in here. 
but there's actually mm, hundreds if not thousands of black worm feeding on that at the same time. So a couple of days that will be gone and the next time I'm ready to feed a treat to Mega Tank, I'll throw in another bit and it's been working really well. You can see exactly how well that's working, uh, but that's a huge glob of black worms. And then it's just a case of taking that around, shooting them up, breaks them up, creates some new black worms, and then I can feed some to the fish. So let's feed a few and see how the fish enjoy it. So for instance, here's the bucktooth tetras. Just throw a few in. And they're very readily taken, shall we say. So the only reason I mention this is because all I've done here, different to my usual method, is to kind of plumb it in. Usually I would just do this in a bucket, scoop of water in, scoop of water out. I don't really need to do anything with this and it's perfect. I think I found the perfect size container. I imagine it would work well if I went even bigger. Uh, and a few folks have pointed me at Greg Jones. So he uses a system very similar to this and rather than just overflowing to waste, he'll have like a sump and then filter the water that way. That would probably work well. But what I think I'm going to do is get in some boxes that are this size, maybe a bit wider. You get at Ikea some wider ones, I forget the name of them, but they also come with a, like a racking system. And then I could have several on the go, and maybe even some of them could be Daphnia, some of them could be brain shrimp, some of them could be um, black worms like this. And then just having like a, a stacked live food station. So that's potentially one of the projects on the go. But right now, this is working really well. And look at the amount of space it takes up. It's nothing. You could do this. It's really easy. Go and check out the link to the video up the top there of how I set this up. And it, you can't really get a better food for your fishies than some live black worms. There we go. Question number one answered. Another question was, how did you get on with the bio rock? So you may have seen a year ago again, I'll link the video, um, this stuff here, Bio Rock from the same people that make um, Bio Home, the filter media. This was uh, gifted to me, so I guess this is a sponsor video. But I use it in this tank, which used to be my better tank, but is now my shrimp tank. And more than my shrimp tank, as you can probably tell, it's my snail farm. And this is for my Fahaka Puffer, so Fahaka Puffer. His update is coming next. But right now it's my snail farm. This does not have a filter in it. So while there are a bunch of shrimp and a bunch of snails all living happily in there, you might be able to see the bubbles at the back. Let me see if I can frame this better. So there's an airline that goes down underneath the bio home, um, or the bio rock, sorry. And it's very porous and lots of holes and I've stacked it all up in the back. It's hard to tell from the way this is shot at the moment. But the air runs through the rock and pulls the water through it and this is well over a year old it's doing a fantastic job at filtering this tank now shrimp and snails is the only thing in there so bear that in mind i haven't got a high bio load in here but the bio rock if it wasn't completely overgrown in this tank i'd be telling you it's great aquascaping stuff but I've kind of just let this tank go to ruin and left it for the shrimp and the snails to do their thing. But Bio Rock, happy with it. So the next question was about the Fahaka Puffer. Um, again, video will be linked up here. I set this tank up as a planted tank. So it was mostly Java fern. There's Java moss, obviously. The Java moss has gone ridiculous. But hidden in here are a few crypts and stuff. I need to do some tank maintenance. But lots of comments saying, no, your fish will destroy all those plants. You can't keep a Fahaka Puffer in a planted tank. Uh, I think you can. So, it has been a success. He hasn't touched any of the plants. I have had a Fahaka in the path that did touch all the plants and was very much interested in nibbling anything. He wasn't eating them, he was just destroying them. So, he has done really well in here. I've actually got him... Um, pellet trained, so I don't know if he'll do it now because I'm filming it, but if I stick in a couple of pellets He sometimes goes for them nah, He's usually quite a prolific and voracious eater of pellets. That is his staple 
um, a well freed clams, obviously we've got the snail breeding system next door um, you'll get a treat occasionally of maybe half a mussel every now and again or a bit of shrimp but pellets is, is a daily thing they're quite hard pellets and they, they soften up quite slowly so they are giving them some kind of usefulness in terms of keeping that beak trimmed down but even though they are quite hard they're no bother for him whatsoever if you don't know for hackers have a beak which is continually growing so if you don't offer them some kind of hard food or some something to rasp on I have heard people talk about they will rasp on the rocks and stuff to file their own teeth down I've never seen that um, so snail shells, clam shells, anything that's got a bit of toughness to it that'll help with that but he has been great loves it in this tank, the plants have been fine it's got loads of swimming space, the only thing I need to do is some maintenance because obviously the java fern, java moss is getting out of control in this algae this started as a kind of a joke where I thought, ah brilliant, I've got some algae and now I can try loads of treatments and then I just kept putting it off and putting it off and now I've got like a carpet of algae it almost looks good, like I meant it <laughs> and so while I did mean to leave it for a while so as I could make a video of me treating it I think I've kind of got past that stage now so I just need to get in there and clean all this up but it doesn't affect the water quality, it doesn't affect the fish he's happy enough, he's got this big old tank to swim around in we're all good so, to answer the question, how's the Vahaka doing? Have you killed him yet? No, I haven't. He's doing well. Then the final question I get asked most often is how is Megatank doing? Often framed in, why have you not shown Megatank? Is it leaking again? How many fish have you killed in Megatank? What have you done wrong with Megatank? So, we'll start at the start. This is Megatank. This is my eight foot aquarium. It's eight foot by four feet by three feet. Um, Yes, a couple of fish have died. So uh, I returned from holiday recently and we lost our giant snake head. But I had no idea how old that snake head was and they're not notorious for being very long lived in home aquaria. I, I took it in as a rescue. Um, he was my water pet, old Gordon, the emperor snake head. So yes, we lost Gordon and just before that, or a few weeks, months before that, we lost one of the Oscars. But parameter wise, the water is very well. Um, I haven't lost any other fish. None of the other fish are showing any signs of any distress or anything like that. Um, so I don't want to just say, oh, it's just one of those things, but oh, it's just one of those things. Um, but often we get asked about this monstrosity on top. So this is an old Christmas tree storage box that I have filled with all kinds of biological media. The way the filtration works for this tank is you might be able to see under there there are some overflows and returns. The overflows go into a sump which is down in this dark corner. I've turned off all the lights so things can be seen a bit easier. This is just sponge in here so this is effectively a settlement chamber and some mechanical filtration which then returns through the pipework up into here goes from one end of this box and this box itself is four feet long and it's just filled with biological filter material all kinds of stuff whether it's ceramic balls bio balls bio home whatever it is just every bit of filtration I own goes in there and that returns back to the tank it works brilliantly the water parameters never deviate on this tank it's so one of the joys of owning a large tank is it's quite hard to have the water parameters fluctuate anyway because of the sheer water volume. There's like two and a half thousand, three thousand litres in this. Um, so any changes to water parameters happen slowly, which is kind of nirvana for fish keepers. But that biological overhead sump really does uh, take care of any nasties in the water. Um, nitrates aren't even high it does really well. The only thing is, the only thing is, it's a bit ugly. So again, another of my projects on the go is, you know those filters you get off Timu that the King and DIY has been um, selling the wonders of, saying how great they are, as I was going to do a DIY version of them. But again, I'm just running out of hours in the day and this does work. It kind of balances perfectly. It's, it's, oh, it's just, 
I didn't plan any of it to work that well, but it does work so well. So well, it's on the back burner. I've got all the parts. I just need to find some time to actually make it. So in terms of filtration, that is doing a great job. I'm a big advocate of sumps anyway. So I was never going to say, oh, I hate it. The only thing I don't like is it means I can't really open the lid on this side of the tank. I have to go in through that side, but I don't have to go in very often. So it's fine. Um, I've got an automatic water change going on there, but it's off at the moment. I'm just saving water because the water parameters are not moving. Uh, in here, I can turn it on. Show you a little bit more. Little valve there, little stopcock. Turn that on. Drips into the tank continuously, but it's off at the moment because I don't really need it to do anything. And other than that, the tank is actually holding up fine. Find some wood touch. <laughs> it's not leaked so far this year. So we're quite happy with it. And all the fish are doing really well in. They're, they're all here going, what is going on? Get this food in here. So we might give them a little feed to round out the video. But all the fish that remain are all doing really well. We've got obviously the giant Garami Brian. He's now pretty much the biggest fish in the tank. The flagtail is not far off, but he's a bit of a bitch, the big dummy. And then, our Oscar here, just happy looking cool. But that Oscar is enormous. It's just dwarfed by the, some of the other fish in here. And the silver dollars, there's, there's a several of them here as well, who I don't feel gets enough love for being how cool he is, hanging out with all the big boys. But the silver dollars, look at the size of them. Some of them are huge. I'll give you my hand for comparison. They're some of the biggest silver dollars I've ever seen. So we'll give them a wee bit of a feed to round off the video. So like I say, this is my DIY tank. If you want a tank of this size, DIY is often the way to go um, to make it financially viable. I'm kind of the, the case that proves that's not true because I've spent thousands on this thing. Um, again, I'll stick up here somewhere or up there somewhere will be the playlist of Mega Tank and how it came together. But I wouldn't be without it, I love it. The, the diet for most of these fish is again pellets, got Massive Ore Delight, Sinking Cichlid Gold from Hikari. I have some of my own ones that I'm working with at the moment. But every now and again, like today, they'll get a treat. The treat will generally be things like fish based or vegetable based because there's fish in there that like a bit of both. So I've got some green beans, which Brian likes, which the Flagtail likes, the Silver Dollars like. They like a bit of green in the diet. Maybe a couple of mussels, prawns, um, mussels, obviously, I don't want to feed a lot of them. Some octopus, some squid. But I'll give them a decent feed and then I'll give the black worms a bit of a feed as well. And these guys are looking good. If you like this kind of thing, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Um, also, every Friday at 9 p.m. UK time, we do a live stream. Come and join me on there. Ask me any questions you want. Down below in the comments, stick any more questions. I'll respond to every comment I get as a question, um, or I'll try to at least. But come and join me on Friday night. This weekend, this week, we do, we're do. we starting the July quizzing, so you can win a prize if you get involved in that. But we're also starting a charity drive that my friend over at Aquarium Daily, Andrew, is starting all this week. So when this video goes out, search Aquarium Daily go and find out more about it and he's raising some money we've already managed to raise about 600 pounds which is fantastic um, but looking to get a little bit more so come and join us for that but if nothing else thank you for joining us and see you in the next one i keep saying us it's just me thank you for joining me bye